A well-known Toledo police officer who's retiring this week took a final patrol today with the city's top cop. And just right over there, 800 feet away, lives a sexual predator. But one local police department is turning these predators into prey. We wanted to see how they do it. We will return you to NBC Nightly News in just a few moments. We have some local breaking news to report to you. Jen, it does seem to be getting uh, pretty well put down. The gas station was evacuated today after a truck hit a natural gas meter. About 25% lignin, about 25% hemicellulose, and about 50% cellulose. It does. It's really kind of nice. Uh, out of the dream home, let's go and visit with Norm. Four days into the February thaw, and local lakes and rivers are losing their thick layer of ice. Local priest accused of inappropriately touching another man is facing criminal charges. Paul Seltzer has been covering that end of the story, the reaction of these residents, and it is indeed a heartbreaking story. And thanks to a local organization, he's getting rewarded for that. The Toledo firefighters are on the scene of an apartment fire at Garden Road and US 23 in South Toledo. You're looking at live pictures from the scene right there. Now it's not clear. The firefighters are having to battle the elements in addition to battling the fire. They've got 16, 17 mile an hour winds from the west. Actually, the gusts of wind going up to 23 miles per hour. The temperature 29 degrees. All that combined gives them a wind chill of 17. And uh, firefighters, if you can imagine, it's a matter of uh, inferno and ice out there with uh, the flames and the intense radiated heat hitting them on one side and this frigid cold air hitting them on the other. Uh, this is just the worst nightmare for a firefighter. It's certainly been. Think of uh, a couple of weeks ago when we had a fairly major industrial fire here in South Toledo as well. And uh, in that instance, while it was a big fire and there were probably, I mean, there were, there were industrial chemicals involved and all kinds of other problems, other hazards, that fire was knocked down relatively quickly. This one, which is a building, a frame structure with wood siding, uh, but of course with people's uh, uh, possessions and all sure. the flammable materials that go into uh, the clothing, the mattresses, and all that other stuff that's inside an apartment building just continues. Well, let's go now. Just when we think they're making some progress on this thing, it erupts again. And here we've heard of two or three explosions in the area. Have no idea what that might have been uh, in a residential apartment complex. Uh, you know, you can only speculate. Mm -hmm. We won't. Making this an impossible fire to fight. Andrew, what is a trap? Once again, we're looking at some of the taped footage from earlier. Really, this is only probably about a half hour into the fire, uh, but you can get a sense of the intensity of it at that point. And the flames just burst through the top of the structure, eventually caused the roof to collapse on building B. And now building F is being threatened as well. You're looking at video of a, a man. Let's talk to Bill Spencer because, oh, you know, Bill, just looking at that smoke, it almost kind of looks like it may have diminished a little bit. The winds may have diminished a little bit. A local solar panel company is expanding, and that means more green jobs. It's unlike corporations. A walk was held today to remember local children who died from neglect and abuse. Members of the Lucas County Children's Services Office walked from one government center to the Children's Services Building on Adams Street. And there, a flag was raised to honor children in our community whose lives have been lost to abuse. A national group that helps war veterans here in Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan is being featured on NBC Nightly News at 6.30. We are talking about... Memorial, it is touching to yes, see those vets there. I can imagine. The prices of gas, groceries, and almost everything else are going up, and a lot of you are looking for ways to save money. That's why backyard gardens are getting a lot of attention. And they taste so much better when you grow them. I'm yourself. a city slicker. I have no idea how to grow vegetables, Would but you, I, I'd love to learn. You have a backyard? Yeah, you can get Jim? started. That's right, Jennifer. We've been covering this story from the very beginning, and it is a story that stretches from here in Toledo all the way to Iraq. Today, all three of the individuals involved have been arraigned in federal court. One of them in Cleveland and the other two right here in Toledo. We've got some video of the two from here in Toledo as they left the courtroom. These two are Marwan Othman El-Hindi, 42 years old, a U.S. citizen born in Jordan, and Wasim Mazloum, 24 years old, who came to the United States from Lebanon in 2000. Now, the other individual involved, Mohammed Zaki Amawi, was arraigned in Cleveland today. And much of the story spreads from our area all the way to Washington. There was a news conference in Washington today. Our Tom Bosco has the story from there. Thanks very much, Tom. Of course, we have all angles of this story covered, including a news conference that happened in Cleveland earlier this afternoon. We'll be getting to that in just a few moments. In the meantime, I'll send it back to you, Jennifer. Well, that arrest makes this next story especially timely. If you're a parent and if your child uses a computer, you may never let him or her go online again. Each day, thousands of men are lurking there, hoping to lure your son or daughter into a rendezvous for sex. 
But one local police department is turning these predators into prey. We wanted to see how they do it. And tonight, in an exclusive NBC24 report, you'll see how they snared their latest suspect. We followed the investigators from the bait to the bust as one man was caught in the sex web. The messages fly through cyberspace. On one side, we'll call her Megan, 14 years old, brown hair, skipping school today. On the other side, someone with an illicit interest in young girls. If I was there, what would we be doing right now? What would you want to do? Have sex with you? Hmm. Would you like that? Might. But the 14-year-old girl is really a Lima police investigator named Jeff Kinkle. Are you a cop? No. Are you? Are you helping the cops? No. See, if you were a cop, you'd have had to say yes. <laughs> we're allowed to lie. <laughs> Kinkle and his team are about to spring a trap on a suspect with a screen name, Cool Shocker. The arrest will take place outside. Dark green car, county number 33. White male, 21, 62, 205. Jeans and a black sweatshirt. An undercover female officer will play the role of the 14-year-old. So far, the PACE team has arrested 20 suspected online predators, many from miles away. We get a lot from Cleveland. Uh, we've had a few from Toledo, Columbus, Dayton, uh, Cincinnati, and then southeastern Ohio, we've had a few, so. The team is in place, and a green car arrives in the parking lot. Walk back out and go to the end of the building and kind of look around and see if he motions you over. If I see you walk in his direction, I'll know. But the police decoy doesn't look like the 14-year-old pictured online. He's leaving. He's leaving, yeah. You and the suspect never makes a move. The team returns empty-handed, and investigator Kinkle goes back online. Pretty soon, cool shocker is back as well. He messages, that pic is not you. This your home? For the next hour, Kinkle constructs a new fiction. He tells Shocker the online picture is really the decoy's 13-year-old sister who has just arrived home. Now I'm the sister, now I'm the 13-year-old. Posing as the 13-year-old, Kinkle promises a three-way meeting. Cool Shocker agrees. I'll be there in about 20 minutes. Kinkle's team is back in business. This time, he feels he has enough for an arrest, even without a decoy to lure Shocker out. You know, the offense was committed when he said what he said on the computer. Just converge on him, we'll box him. The team swoops in. The man in the green car is busted. <laughs> oh well, he's caught. These folks need to learn that if they're going to um, solicit children for sex and, and try to have sex with children, they had not to come to Lima and try to do it because there's a pretty good chance they're going to get arrested. The suspect, 21-year-old Matthew Oddenweller Jr. of Ada, was charged with importuning a fifth-degree felony. A scuba instructor friend of mine stopped me in the park and said he planned to start teaching disabled people to dive. I said I thought I knew the perfect student, a young woman who works here at NBC24 and who happens to use a wheelchair. Recently, she took her first lessons. I took the pictures underwater, and NBC24's chief photographer Tim Winning shot from above. Tanisha Ulrich was active and outdoorsy long before the accident that stole the use of her legs. Now, Tanisha is ready to take on a fresh challenge. Okay, ready, Tom? One, two, three. One that will take her into a realm that many people who can walk fear to tap. Because I've always loved the water and I've always wanted to be underwater the whole time I was swimming. Uh, we want them to be able to live as normal lives as possible. And this is Jeff Davis is the owner of Toledo's Aqua Hut Scuba and Instruction Facility. You don't know what's back there, you don't know what's to the right or left, so sometimes you The only difference is she has to use her hands for propulsion where everybody else is using their legs. Now he's planning to open up the underwater world to people of all abilities. And to be able to anybody uh, to put them underneath the water and be able to let them see what it's like. So we're going to train anybody. Like all scuba students, Tanisha begins learning skills in the pool. What she does here will set the stage for diving in the open water, lakes, rivers, even the ocean. Just doing things that for yourself that 
you didn't think that you could do, and, and it's, it's empowering in a lot of different ways, for physically and emotionally. During her first lesson, Tanisha has a little trouble clearing her mask of water. And I drank some water. It surprised me how quickly um, I panicked. But within minutes, she's using her arms to power her way through the water. And soon, she's doing something she never even imagined. I had to put my feet actually on the floor of the pool, and I straightened my legs out, and then I was, it was like I was just standing up. It was great. And you know, when she came out of the water, and she was just, I mean, as I say, glowing from ear to ear. It was awesome. It felt really good. Equipped with a shared dream and her own tough spirit, Tanisha Ulrich learned today how to defy gravity. And next month, Tanisha will take her open water checkout in a flooded local quarry. We'll bring you the story when it happens. The Dive Heart Foundation provides this kind of instruction nationwide, and we have a link on our website, plus a link to Jeff's Aqua Hut Scuba School.